Hi, my name is Dr. Natalie Winter, and I'm a research fellow in the School of Nursing and Midwifery in the Institute for Health Transformation at Deakin University. My area of expertise is in supporting carers of people with cancer, in particular using digital health resources. Today, I'll be presenting on a policy brief that I published as part of a Deval Institute scholarship. My brief focused on how we can prioritise and support carers within the healthcare system. Policy is needed to safeguard carers' health and well-being. Most carers experience poor health outcomes themselves as a direct result of being in the caring role. In many cases, this results in carers relying on the healthcare system to support their health in addition to that of the patient. For example, carers are twice as likely to have a disability and four times as likely to have suicidal thoughts compared to the general population. These two examples highlight how the caring role impacts on government spending, including NDIS and Medicare-funded psychology sessions. The number of carers will grow as we're living in an ageing population and the number of people requiring care will increase. Additionally, with more effective life-saving treatments available, many people are living longer with chronic illness, some of which results in long-term adverse effects for the patient. The existing Care Recognition Act is vague in providing guidelines for how carers need to be supported, and there are no measurable outcomes to ensure that healthcare services and clinicians are adopting the recommendations into practice. As it stands now, the healthcare system is not equipped to support carers, and we have no real guidelines for how this can be improved going forward. We are blind to carers and their needs. Available frameworks for assessing carers' needs differ depending on disease or may focus on patients and carers together. Assessments are inconsistently performed or may not be performed at all. Because of this, we have no real picture on who carers are, what their needs are, and whether they've been referred to supportive services. The patient-centred model of care prioritises each patient's diagnosis, treatment pathway, personal needs and wishes. Within the patient-centred model of care, carers are included as consumers or as part of the patient's support team, and little focus is given to supporting carers' own well-being. Opportunities for carers to fit within the current healthcare systems are unknown. It's predicted that by 2030, there'll be a shortage of healthcare workers globally. This means that care is likely to be pushed further into community settings and onto carers. There are opportunities to support carers in the community, such as care coordinators and telehealth, However, these strategies require ongoing funding from government. Lastly, clinicians themselves are not supported to address carers' needs. There is minimal training within undergraduate degrees on carers and available resources for carers are not widely known. In clinical practice, little support is provided by government to assess carers by way of Medicare funding. This means that clinicians are unable to dedicate time to carers' needs individually. There are some ways in which we can improve visibility and support for carers within the healthcare system. The first is to collect data on carers, and this can be done using one standardised assessment framework to ensure that carers' needs are consistently captured and health outcomes can be monitored in the long term. Without more data, we don't know what areas carers need support in and where to allocate government funding. To ensure that patients still receive quality care and that an additional burden is not placed on clinicians, it is important to use co-design to develop strategies for including carers in the healthcare system. This includes speaking with carers, patients, clinical and non-clinical staff. And third, we need to equip, equip clinicians and empower them to deliver care to carers. 
This includes training on the need for carer assessment and how to conduct it, as well as providing them with easier referral pathways to existing services. Education can occur via workshops for existing clinicians and for undergraduates, shadowing and conducting carer assessment during clinical placements as strategies which may be used. And finally, it's important to undertake a regular and ongoing evaluation on carers' wellbeing, uptake of services, and the success of educational strategies for clinicians. This will inform government spending for carers' health. Thank you for listening to my presentation. If you'd like to get in touch, please send me an email using the email address on screen. Thanks.